This is Mr. Coley on Noir, and this is going to be my review of my Heckler & Co. P2000 SK, chambered in 9mm. I bought this gun because I was looking for a dedicated 9mm handgun. I wanted a dedicated 9mm handgun because uh, in the event that everything just kind of went crazy and things got chaotic where I was, um, it, I knew that in any event, if I couldn't find one round, I knew I could get my hands on the 9mm round. Um, I do have a PM9, which is my carry 9mm round, a handgun. But I wanted something a little more dedicated and something not so small, but not too big. I'm not too big with full-size handguns, um, so I tend to stay in the, the compact to subcompact range. And this was my alternative to the Glock 26, my Heckler & Co. P2000 SK. Y'all you, you, guys are gonna learn that I actually really like saying the name. It's really long. For some reason, I find every opportunity to say it. So y'all are gonna have to bear with me on that. So let's get on to the review. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I saw this gun was I really, really love the way that it looked. Um, where the Glock has a more function, purpose-driven kind of look to it. Uh, th this gun achieves the same thing except with a little more flair. Um, as you can see, this gun is unbelievably over-engineered. Not only from a functional standpoint, but from an aesthetic standpoint and just the way it looks. This gun looks like it's ready to go to war. This gun looks like you could throw it from a building and it'll still function. This gun looks every bit of the type of quality that you hear and it's associated with Heckler & Co. Um, I do love the so grip serrations that are along the handle here. Um, they're not very aggressive, but man, are they functional. And I actually like the way they look. I honestly don't know what this is called in terms of the pattern but from just the way it looks, it looks really neat and I really do like the way it looks. Um, the slide in particular really stands out to me and that it's really machined, uh, quite a bit actually, uh, more so than most handguns. And I, I kind of like that, especially with the attention to details. The H&K, just from, just from looking at it, from the very moment you, you lay your eyes on it, you can tell that this gun is it's based entirely on ergonomics, um, right down to the way the slide feels and the way it functions. Now, I'm gonna start off with the grip. Now with the grip, you do have the stippling, the stippling on the side here, which honestly, you don't notice. Um, or at least I don't. My, I don't really make much contact with that side of the grip, um, but it, I mean, pretty, I guess for the most part, it gets the job done. Now, it's the stippling on the back that really make the, the, the surface feel of this gun excel the way it does. Now, it looks aggressive, but it's really not. But at the same time, it manages to be very functional. Um, when you get a grip on this gun, whether your hand is dry, whether it's wet, no matter what, you get, you feel like you have a good purchase on this gun. Now to talk about let's talk about the magazine. This little pinky extension here on the magazine is born of infamy. I know uh, from what I from what I've encountered, many people hate this. They hate it a lot, actually. I frankly kind of like it, and the reason is this. Well, first let me start by the reason why people don't like it. Many people don't like this grip, this little pinky extension, because they feel like the three fingers become jammed in between the, the trigger guard and the extension. 
Now, on first thought, you're thinking, well, yeah, that's going to be pretty uncomfortable. But what you fail to realize is what that allows you to do is not only get a three finger purchase on a subcompact frame, but this is plastic. This is rubber. I'm sorry. This is rubber and it gives. So what that allows you to do is you get a three finger purchase on the gun, but then you also get a very positive, you get a very positive feel from this rubber and the trigger guard. And after some time, you get used to it. And the rubber, I dare say, almost tends to form or get used to being in that position in terms of the force that your pinky finger places on the actual pinky grip. And what it does is allows me, one, get right up under the slide so the bore axis is optimal. And then also almost forcing me without even having to think about it giving me a very positive grip on this gun and it's secure and I feel like it can't go anywhere. So from that standpoint, even though it's, it's left to opinion, I do think this pinky grip is a good thing. Now, uh, another point is the trigger release. I mean, the uh, magazine release. Everyone knows that HNKs are notorious for the trigger releases being I mean, it's the European trigger release for the most part. And instead of having a push, but uh, push button, you have a, release button on the side here by the trigger guard that you press down and it drops the magazine do i have an i really don't have an opinion as far as how i feel about that um, i've gotten used to it since i've had the gun and it works well and what it also allows is it allows the gun to be ambidextrous and that's another point about this gun it is extremely ambidextrous whether you're left-handed or right hand you can pick up this gun and it feels like the gun was made for you we have a ambidextrous slide release on this side and this side i also have an ambidextrous i mean slide release magazine release ambidextrous magazine release on this side and this side so no matter whether you're right-handed or left-handed this gun is going to fit to the way you feel your this gun's going to fit to your your optimal desire now the only thing that isn't ambidextrous is the decocker the decocker is on the back of the gun on the left hand side now that's not much of an issue because though the decocker is on the left left hand side of the gun i can just as easily bring my thumb around and decock it with my left hand. That That's not an issue. As we all know, H&Ks are not cheap. And there are some people out there who wonder what is the big deal? Why the $300, $400 premium on a gun that pretty much does the exact same thing as any other gun in, in, in its class or below its, below its class? And to be honest with you, you really can't determine that just by looking at the gun, nor reading stat, reading stats about the gun on the internet. You honestly really just have to manipulate the gun. You have to handle it. You have to feel it. You have to work. You have to work the slide. The work the slide release. You have to work the magazine release. And as soon as you do that, you'll understand that the fit and finish and quality of this gun is exceptional. You really cannot deduce it down to words but it is and, and and what it allows is allows for almost a, a, a euphoric kind of well, I don't want to go that far but but basically you 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 can feel it you can feel the quality of this gun when you work especially with the slide my god the slide functions it's very mechanical but at the same time very smooth so when you i i honestly like to sit sometimes uh, load up the magazine, which I'm not going to do here now, and work the slide through the entire magazine just to see how effortless this gun spits the rounds out and how smooth the slide works back and forth. This is like a well-tuned machine. And you, you honestly, I, I, I've yet to see anything that can mimic how easily this gun cycles. It's, it's just beautiful, as a matter of fact.